Hey, my name is Michael Rosso. Welcome to 4x5 Photography, Intro to Large Format, Part 2. This is the second video in the series on the Graphlex Crown Graphic Camera, which Matt Marash and I unveiled in the first part of the video. In this part, I'm going to be going over how you could really just get started with it. The first thing we need to talk about is the film stock, which is 4x5 four by, four by sheet film. comes in lots of different flavors. It's still manufactured. Kodak makes Ektar 100. There's Portra 400. There's Portra 160. There's Kodak Tri-X. There's Kodak T-Max. There's Ilford stocks. There are Fuji stocks. There are Fuji transparency stocks. Now, for today, I'm going to show you what's in the box, which is pretty exciting, because normally you would have to do this inside a dark room or inside what's known as a film-changing bag. You would open your box in the dark, and you'd notice inside the box is another box. You would open the second box, and in there you would find a wrapper that sort of looks like, looks like a Pop-Tart wrapping that you'd find on your Kellogg's Pop-Tarts in the morning. And inside that wrapper is your film sandwiched between two pieces of cardboard. So if you were in the dark doing this, the first thing you would do would be to reach in, you would find your film, and then you would find with your fingers where the notches are. As you can see, 4x5 film is notched. Just remember that that notch needs to be in the right-hand corner when you're loading the film. So here is a film holder with its protective film slides out. And what you would do in the dark is you would get your film holder. And by the way, these film holders are standard. So the film holder for a 4x5 camera, they're made by a few different companies, but they're all the same and they fit all different they fit all of the 4x5 cameras, which is fantastic. So you would pull this lip down to load your film and on the film holder, there are two little metal rails here that hold the film into place. It's very important to get your film underneath the rails. With your hand, you would feel where the etches are, so that remains in the right-hand corner. That would be emulsion up. The other side is the shiny part of the film. You want emulsion up. You would load the film underneath the film holder rails. Kind of feel your way as you do it. Make sure it's properly loaded all the way up. Now, once it's loaded up, you would close the lip, and then you would insert your film slide. Here's your film slide. There are two sides to the film slide. One side is always silver or white, and the other side is always black. For unexposed film, I always put the white side up. Contrary to what it actually says on the slide, which the previous owner, I bought these used, the previous owner wrote exposed on here, which is kind of annoying because it can confuse you. What I do, I just stick to the very simple rule of white side, white side out, unexposed film, black exposed. So here we are in the dark room. You put your black slide in, white side out, not exposed, and then you would do the flip side as well. It would be the same. Now that we have our film loaded, now we could kind of look at the camera. The camera is a beautiful, beautiful camera. Very, very hardy, uh, very tough camera. Uh, you know, built to last, as you can tell. And it comes with a optional. This particular camera came with a range finder on the side, which means that you don't need to focus through the ground glass. You would cock your shutter. And then open this window up. Bink. So now you can look through your camera, through the back ground glass to your shot. And by adjusting the bellows, you would focus up your shot. Classic range finder. You look through the window. You can actually see two images. And when your two images merge, that means you have focus. Frame your shot up through this frame finder window right here. Also, with this particular model, this model came with the flash gun. The flash gun is an item that you don't really need to have on the camera if you plan on shooting traditionally through the ground glass, let's say landscapes, where as you would get ready to shoot and you would shoot traditionally using a cable release like so. 
the lens on the camera, by the way, since we're talking about that. You have your shutter speeds, which, you know, go from B to 400th of a second. You would have your f-stops. The fastest is f4.7, and you could stop all the way down to f32. You would cock your shutter to shoot, open this little window to frame up through the back. Once you're framed up, you would close this window. Now you're ready to shoot. Bingo. Let's say you want to shoot with a flash. You would plug this baby right in, and then you're ready to shoot with a flash bulb. You could use the number five flash bulbs, or you could use the more dramatic, much bigger number 25 flash bulbs. You'll notice that when you're buying these at garage sales or on eBay, that they come either B or regular. B means that they're just coated blue, like, like so, and the, the regular ones are just white. I use both. I really don't have a problem with either one. I haven't really noticed that much of a difference in exposures. Right now I'm prepping it. And if I were to shoot new style, I have no film on the camera right now. If I was shooting new style, I would frame up my picture. I would focus up by moving this lever right here, which brings the bellows of the camera out. So whether you're focusing through the ground glass in the back or focusing through the rangefinder, as you can see, the bellows are moving. That changes your focus. Once you get your focus, if I'm shooting new style, I would look through the, the view piece right there, frame up my shot, and ah! nice! Now that I've gone through some of the functions of this camera, uh, I want to stress the fact that, once again, this is not, you know, this is really a, 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 a t kind of touch on. My intention with this video is to really get you familiar with this camera and get you into the idea that you could actually buy one and shoot with it and, and take some really amazing pictures with it. You can buy a camera like this. I see them on eBay.com all the time. I uh, can recommend that you buy from someone, buy from a seller that knows their gear. Buy from a seller that, that owned the camera, that used to shoot with the camera. Try to avoid uh, eBay auctions that claim, I know nothing about this camera. I bought this from an estate sale, know no, nothing about it, as is. BS on that, I say. You want to buy a camera. You want to make an investment into a piece of gear that's going to last you maybe another 50 years. So buy wisely. Don't be afraid to ask questions. And always make sure that the seller will take the camera back if it's not working. 4x5 film is readily available and available right in our very own film photography store. That's right, at the best prices on the web. And I want to share those with you. So I'm going to do a quick demo of shooting this camera with some film in it, but I wanted to give you an overview. If you have any questions, you could reach me at podcast at filmphotographyproject.com. If you have any questions about this camera or anything 4x5 related, both myself or resident large format shooter Matt Marash would be happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, so by this time we've gone through all the, the, the functions of the Crown Graphic camera and we're ready to actually take a shot with film. Now the great thing about the Crown Graphic is the fact that it's known as a press camera and it's known as a press camera because it was used by, well, the press. You know, people like Ouija and reporters. So as I had mentioned before, this camera has a rangefinder built in so if you want to focus, you don't necessarily have to focus using the ground glass. And here it is. You would focus through the back of the camera, through the lens, through the ground glass. But you don't have to. You could shoot what I call news style, which is awesome, by using the rangefinder and focusing in your rangefinder focuser. I'm going to shoot totally news style in the sense that frame them up through the rangefinder. I'm going to use the news flash using a number five bulb on the back. It's actually a red button right there. So I don't want to fire my shutter through my uh, cable release. I want to fire it through the flash apparatus. You will uh, set your f-stop and your shutter speed. I'm going to shoot today at 50th of a second at f22. You cock your shutter, great, loading the camera for a live shot, 
clicks into place. I will now rotate my camera right here. I will focus up. I will remove the dark slide like so. One, two, three. Nice. Woohoo! As you can see, with older flashes, you will get some, uh, you know, fire. Put your, your dark slide back in with the proper side, the dark side now showing. Pull your film folder out of. And now as you can see, I'm exposed. I have the dark side. I use the system where the dark side is used. There it is. Now this is really just a starter, a continuation of our first video to get you motivated to get out with your Crown Graphic camera. These cameras are readily available and I think that you will have lots of fun with it. My name is Michael Rosso. I'm at the filmphotographypodcast.com. That's the radio show that I host. And you can send me an email at podcast at filmphotographyproject.com. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you very soon.